welcome back to my channel. Um, in today's video, um, I wanted to review this book here called The Happiness Dictionary by Dr. Tim Lamass. Um, I got this book from the library um, as a filler book while I was waiting for my next fiction. Um, I didn't. It actually took me longer to read than I thought it would. I think because it's quite a, like a big book, as you can see. Um, but it was an enjoyable read. Um, now, um, this book, I'll put the link below to this book. Um, it contains many untranslatable words from other cultures and languages that can shine a light on how to achieve happiness and fulfilment in life. I made a note of the entries that most resonated with me. There were many, many, many different words covered in this book. Um, as the blurb says on the back, have you ever had a feeling that you couldn't quite describe because no English word exists for it? Indeed, without such a word, it's difficult to remember or understand the feeling and to talk about it with other people. This applies to all aspects of life, but especially to that most sought after of feelings, happiness, where our ability to both experience and understand it is limited by the words at our disposal. However, all is not lost. Even if English has not created a word for a specific feeling, another language probably has. These are known as untranslatable words because they lack an exact equivalent in another language. By discovering and learning these words, the boundaries of our world expand accordingly. These words allow us to give voice to feelings that we've probably experienced, but have previously lacked the ability to conceptualise. They may even allow us to encounter new feelings that we hadn't previously been aware of or enjoyed. So as I say, this book contains many different words, so I'm just going to cover the ones that most resonated with me. Firstly, there is Wu Wei. Wu Wei, which means natural, effortless action. This word derives from the ancient Chinese religion of Taoism. The Tao is the patterns and rhythms of life. And it is argued that if we align ourselves with the patterns of nature, we will find peace. Our actions should be accomplished without struggle, by being authentic, uncontrived and going with the flow. I think this means that as an autistic person who likes to regulate myself through physical movements, I should allow myself to jump and move whenever I feel the energy, instead of resisting the urge, you know, as I might do, say, in order to try and, like, fit in, or, you know, and that obviously results in inhibition. Um, but this, this, will, this inhibition will only result in a build-up of tension and a state of energy imbalance because I'm not going with the flow. So I think, I do think there is some truth in this. You know, if we do allow ourselves to move freely, to do what nature demands, you know, unthinking, just, in a sense, just being, just following the natural rhythms, our natural rhythms, that will ensure that our energy is balanced and that will keep us feeling well and will reduce stress and might even prevent disease. So I do think Wu Wei is quite important. The next word on my list is ge is Gelasen, yeah, I'm trying to pronounce this properly, Gelasenheit, it's a German word, Gelasenheit, which is a German word for calm submission, Gelasenheit, calm submission or changing what it's a, yeah, it means calm submission or changing what needs to be changed but accepting what can't change. So some things in our life we can try and change for the better but there are many other things in our life that we might just have to accept. These things can't be changed so we just have to submit to them calmly. So I can't change the fact that my autism gives me many difficulties. There are some aspects of my life that you know, I might be able to improve on so I could work on my anxiety to the best of my ability. I could try and challenge myself. Um, but I, at the end of the day, I will have to admit that I'm never going to be able to get rid of all of the difficulties that my autism brings. So I just have to try and accept them. Accepting the fact um, will make my life easier if I accept this than if I were to battle in vain against my neurology. Then we have the Italian word fiero, which is, a justi which is justified pride in our achievements. For example, when we have achieved something we have not done before, or successfully tackled a fear. Paul Ekman defines this as enjoyment felt when you have met a challenge that stretched your capabilities. You have done your best and should feel rightfully pleased with yourself. Fiero. For example, I might feel fie fiero, fiero when I have successfully tried a new food or travelled to a new place that has triggered anxiety. 
The next word, mornfrisk, is Danish and means the sense of feeling fresh and well rested after sleep. Unfortunately, I feel this feeling rarely. Most days when I wake up, I'm already feeling rather, ugh, like, heavy and, like, really not that energised. Um, but there are occasions um, I do, when I do get this feeling, and when I do, I feel that great sense of energy and bounciness, and it feels quite amazing. You know, you just have, although sometimes I sometimes think, feel like almost too much energy, like I don't know quite what to do with it, maybe because the feeling is quite rare. But that's a good word for it anyway, mournfrisk. Some words have interesting origins. The word enthusiasm comes from the Greek word enthusiasmos. En means in and theos means God. So it literally means divine inspiration, being swept away by a sacred force or being transported to a divine well. The next word may... Try to pronounce this correctly. Um, me, yeah, meraki. Meraki, meraki is Greek for ardour for one's own actions and creations, or for love of particular experiences that give meaning to our lives. My meraki is reading and cooking. So, um, you know, when I cook or, you know, create something, a, a, a new recipe or what have you, um, I do this with ardour, I guess a kind of rather obsessive love, as I do get rather obsessed with things, but that's called meraki. Next we have Eros. Now, although Eros was the Greek god of love, this did not necessarily mean a yearning for other people. It can also mean an appreciation of certain items we hold dear. Eros is a higher form of love, a love for beauty and truth, or even an idea. The loved object reflects perfection and order. So all my interests bring such order and harmony to my life, so I can very much relate to this ideal, this sort of craving for order, and symmetry and everything being perfectly aligned. Yes, I could definitely relate to that. When that that yearning obviously makes life feel better, and you know, you can see some kind of order through the chaos. Although unfortunately, life always conspires to bring back the chaos. So yes, it's constant tension there. The next word that spoke to me was dudiri, 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 dudiri. This is an or, or dadiri. I'm not quite sure you pronounce it. Dadiri, dadiri. This is an Aboriginal word for deep contemplative listening. There is no need for words here, as we just sit with nature, quietness. We listen as we just sit with nature's quietness. We listen patiently, both to others and to nature, waiting and not hurrying things up. So it's sort of being receptive, unjudgmental, just listening without um, any prior assumptions. An incredibly difficult thing to do. The emphasis here is to simply being, rather than in outcomes and activity. But something to so so something to aspire towards, even though it's very difficult. Okay, so I'm now going to be moving on to part two of this list of words in this book that spoke to me. So moving on to part two now.